right friends welcome back to the third capsule of 36th week this is on genetically modified variety of mustard there is a lot of controversy going on with regard to genetically modified mustard and in this connection let us start with the saga of genetically modified crops in our country first and the foremost is genetically modified cotton otherwise the name is bt cotton bt cotton or genetically modified cotton variety produces different types of toxins so that it will kill insects different types of toxins are produced and thereby it will kill lot many insects and one such insect is a bollworm that's why when people say bt cotton it is primarily the cotton crop which produces insecticide which kills bollworm right so bt cotton was developed by monsanto monsanto is a missouri based company missouri is in united states of america and in the year 2010 bt brinjal was developed by mahiko mahiko is the company based in jalna in maharashtra and they developed bt brinjal but government has not approved it because brinjal is a food crop and now gm mustard after 10 to 12 years of extensive research scientists from delhi university developed this gm mustard and lot of controversy is going on because it is a food crop this was developed by genetics department of delhi university and professor associated with it is at present deepak pentel and if you look at the present day problems with bt cotton bollworm is also affecting bt cotton in recent times initially it was thought that it produces insecticides which will kill bollworm but nowadays bollworm is also affecting bt cotton second is high royalty charges the cost of seeds is very high that is affecting several poor farmers in this country third important aspect is non sharing of its technology with the local firms and another important aspect is market monopoly in the seeds so these are the effects which we have noticed after the introduction of this bt cotton variety in the year 2002 however during the past 10 12 years the yields of cotton almost doubled and if you look at the regulator the regulator for approving genetically modified crops in this country is genetic engineering appraisal committee or geac geac is the body under the ministry of environment forest and climate change and now the assessment report with regard to the findings of the sub committee of genetic engineering appraisal committee was released and i have listed various points as per the data released by the sub committee of genetic engineering appraisal committee genetic engineering appraisal committee as i have already told you under the ministry of environment forest and climate change so if you look at the details the name of this crop is thara mustard hybrid 11 or dmh11 as i have already told you this is developed by the scientists of delhi university and as per the findings of sub committee this is a safe for human consumption animal feed as well as for environment and this uses a system of genes from common non pathogenic bacteria and incidentally only assessment report was made public but not the entire biosafety data and recently central information commission also advised the ministry of environment forest and climate change to make available the full biosafety data but assessment report was kept in website and biosafety data in full was not revealed and as per the sub committee findings it is highly unlikely to invade natural ecosystems and poses a negligible risk to biodiversity and agriculture productivity so as per the findings of the report the risk to biodiversity is negligible with the introduction of this dmh11 variety of mustard so these are all the findings of sub committee of geac and 
If you look at the genetically modified crops across the world, genetically modified crops became commercialized for almost uh, for the past 20 years. Since 1996, these genetically modified crops became broadly commercialized. And at the same time, interesting point is uh, only three countries, United States of America, Brazil and Argentina account for more than 75 percent of total acreage of GM crops. And four crops account for majority of GM acreage. The four crops, one is corn, the second one is soya bean, then cotton, then canola. These four account for majority of the acreage under GM crops. Then GM crops are grown in around 28 countries and grown by around 18 million farmers. And expansion to other food crops and to other countries are being resisted by opposition from several consumer and environmental groups. And the interesting point is USA fully supports genetically modified crops, but most of the countries of European Union opposes genetically modified crops. Even among the scientific community, the opinion with regard to genetically modified crops is quite diverse. America says genetically modified crops are safe, whereas European Union says they are not safe for human consumption and several countries banned the usage of genetically modified variety in various parts of Europe. More than 10 percent of the world's arable land is at present planted with the GM crops. Right? And what is meant by genetic modification? Genetic modification is basically altering DNA. You may ask what is meant by DNA? DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. This is the material inside the nucleus of the cells carrying genetic information. So, this DNA is altered with the use of enzymes. You may ask what is meant by enzyme? Enzyme is nothing but a protein which speeds up chemical reaction and certain enzymes can cut pieces of DNA from one organism and can join them into other organism. So, enzymes cut pieces of DNA from one organism and they will be inserted into the gap in the DNA of another organism and the new organism because of this alteration is known as a genetic modification. Right? So, this is the way of doing genetic modification and if you look at the reasons for genetic modification in food crops, you may ask a pertinent question why genetic modification is required for food crops. First and the foremost is to increase resistance to abiotic stresses. You may ask a pertinent question, what is the difference between biotic and abiotic? Biotic is concerning life like plants and animals, that is biotic. Abiotic means without life, right? So, to increase the resistance to abiotic stresses like drought, extreme temperature, salinity and at the same time to increase the biotic resistance that means the resistance to insects, viruses and various pathogens. And the third important aspect is to increase the nutritional value of food crops and one example in recent times is development of golden rice. Then another interesting aspect is for production of recombinant medicines with genetic modification, you can produce vaccines. Hence, to produce recombinant medicines, this genetic modification is required. So, reasons for genetic modification in food crops I have listed out here. And now let us discuss about the proponents and the opponents what the proponents are saying, what the opponents are saying as far as GM crops are concerned. As per the proponents, higher crop yields, higher crop yields will supplement the incomes of farmers. And in several developing countries, farmers are suffering because of subsistence agriculture and with the introduction of GM crops, the farmers income will raise. That's why 
farmers can come out of poverty trap, can come out of subsistence agriculture, that is one point. Second point is, it will ensure food security to growing millions of world population. Second one is, they reduce the need for pesticides and herbicides. Normally, we use pesticides to kill various types of insects, but genetic modification will ensure that because of a production of a toxins in the crop itself, insects will be killed and the toxins produced due to genetic modification will not be harmful to the human beings and the toxins will kill insects. They are harmful to the insects, but not harmful to the human beings for consumption. So, because of production of several toxins, insects will be killed. And at the same time, it will reduce the need for herbicides. Right? And because of these two reasons, total manpower required to grow the crops will also be reduced. Third important aspect is, food quality and shelf life can be increased. This is pertinent if you look at a country like India, where proper cold storage facilities are not available. Fourth important aspect is, genetic modification will result in better withstanding to weather fluctuations. So, the GM crops can be engineered to withstand weather fluctuations and extremes of weather. Then, fifth important point is, they can be engineered to increase the nutrients. And this is mostly relevant for developing countries, where substantial population are suffering because of malnutrition. And a recent example is development of golden rice. These are the views of the proponents of genetically modified crops. And if you look at the opponents, a larger debate is going on with regard to the effects on human health. As I have already told you, Americans feel they are perfectly safe, but European countries feel that they are not safe. So, there is a fear that genetic modification may lead to emergence of new diseases in human beings. Second important point is, there were cases which triggered allergy in human beings. If you look at the third point, Organisms in the ecosystem will be harmed. What I mean to convey is, biodiversity will be disturbed. Because of disturbance to biodiversity, some of the organisms may become extinct in due course of time. Fourth important point is, because of patent rights, only few companies are enjoying monopoly in GM crops. The present leading players in GM crops are Monsanto, Syngenta, Bayer and it may lead to exploitation of farmers in poor developing countries. The fifth one is, in due course of time, these GM crops may develop resistance to insecticides and agriculture may become costly at that juncture. One classic example is, after 10 to 12 years of introduction of Bt cotton, now bollworm is affecting Bt cotton. It is not able to give resistance for bollworm. So, these are the issues raised by the opponents. So, there is a strong case put forward by the proponents. At the same time, strong case put forward by the opponents. Under these circumstances, now GM mustard crop assessment report is made public and government is going to take a decision maybe next month with regard to introduction of GM mustard and a wider debate across the country is going on with regard to the introduction of GM mustard. The first food crop, if it is agreed by the central government for cultivation. Right friends, let us conclude this uh, capsule here. Please do join for other capsules. Have a nice day. Thank you.